Welcome to another Noble Review session for AP Macro and Microeconomics. Last time we went over the production possibilities curve. Today we're going to continue to use that model to go over absolute advantage, comparative advantage, and trade. Here are production possibilities frontiers for Surf Kingdom and Sandland. These PPFs were drawn with a straight line. That means that opportunity costs are constant. Now let's go over absolute advantage, or who can produce more. If Surf Kingdom put all their resources into beach balls, they can produce 50 of them. Sandland, if they put all their resources into beach balls, they can produce 25. Because Surf Kingdom can produce more beach balls than Sandland, Surf Kingdom has the absolute advantage in beach ball production. Now if you notice down here when it comes to ice cream, they both can produce 50 units of ice cream. So nobody has the absolute advantage in ice cream production. Let's put all this information into a chart to determine the opportunity cost of one beach ball and the opportunity cost of one unit of ice cream in these two economies. Whichever economy has the lower opportunity cost in the production of a good is said to have the comparative advantage. When they have the comparative advantage, that means that they would specialize in the production of that good and export that good if trade is to occur. To determine the opportunity cost of producing a beach ball, we make beach balls the denominator. So we take 50 ice cream cones, divide that by 50 beach balls for Surf Kingdom, and we get an opportunity cost of one ice cream cone. So every time Surf Kingdom produces one beach ball, they're sacrificing one unit of ice cream. In Sandland, we take 50 ice cream cones divided by 25 beach balls, and we have an opportunity cost of two units of ice cream for every beach ball that they produce. Because Surf Kingdom has the lower relative opportunity cost in beach ball production, they have the comparative advantage. For the opportunity cost of ice cream, we reverse the fraction. So now we have 50 beach balls in Surf Kingdom divided by 50 units of ice cream gives us an opportunity cost of one beach ball. In Sandland, we take 25 beach balls, divide them by 50 ice cream cones for an opportunity cost of half a beach ball. Sandland has the lower opportunity cost in ice cream production, so they have the comparative advantage. In order for these two economies to trade with one another, they both must benefit. Surf Kingdom must receive more than one ice cream cone for every beach ball that it will export, and Sandland wants to import more than half a beach ball for every ice cream cone it exports. Suppose the terms of trade are one beach ball for one and a half units of ice cream. Will this trade occur? Let's check out Surf Kingdom first. Surf Kingdom must import more than one ice cream cone for each beach ball that it exports. Here, they're going to receive one and a half units of ice cream for every beach ball that it exports. So yes, for Surf Kingdom, it's a go. Now, will Sandland import more than half a beach ball for each ice cream cone that it exports? The answer here is also yes. They're going to receive two-thirds of a beach ball for each ice cream cone that it exports. Remember this simple rule. If imports divided by the exports are greater than the opportunity cost of what the country is exporting, then the trade will be beneficial. That wraps up the Noble Review session on absolute advantage, comparative advantage, and trade. I go over a couple other tricks with my students in class and also in the Noble Review books, but you definitely have enough to get you by. In the next video, we're going to look at the best looking model ever, the circular flow model.